are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm really well, darling. Thank you. Look at that colourful rail. I know. You. Look at that rail. Just full of joy. Lucy, I want to get a spring in people's steps. I know we've got cabin fever, but it's we're being safe by staying at home, but it's sunny outside and... What I really want people to feel inspired by is to wear color. And this is Closet Confessions, color. So I'll challenge everybody each week is to see what Lucy picked up from last week's. So, <laughs> darling, tell us. I was very inspired by your Zimmerman um, dress. Yeah. So I've got this uh, broidery and glaze top, which is from Whistles. And uh -huh. then this very little white earring. I wanted to do white on white because I thought it looked so great on you. But I thought it echoed the delicacy of the fabric. It, it does it so beautifully. Shop your own wardrobe. Shop in your own wardrobe. You need to first of all work out which colours you suit. Susanna and I wrote a book called What You Wear Can Change Your Life. If you can still get it on Amazon. In that, I remember spending six months researching what colours are you, and we put them into three categories just to make life easy. Cool, mid or warm. If you're cool toned, generally, it means that your hair doesn't have any red in it. If it's blonde, it's a very cool blonde. It's not yellow blonde. Your eyes could be bright blue, but there'll be a very strong blue with a darker black line around the eye. If you have skin, which doesn't have much, you could have a bit of red in it. You could have rosacea and be cool toned, but you wouldn't probably have freckles. A caramel skin generally wouldn't sit in cool toned. A brown skin, if it had a red undertones, wouldn't sit in cool tones, but if it had a sort of brown undertones it would if you've got a sort of olivey complexion and it's not too green it's just olive like a cleaner off it that's cool warm tones people who suit warm toned colors generally have warmth in their complexion their hair could be blonde but it would be a sort of really warm blonde it could be nearly a strawberry blonde they could easily be brunettes they could be auburns they could be redheads for sure hazily eyes brown eyes they could have a greeny eye but it's a dirty green eye mid is the is the point where you can dip into warm and cool so mid-tone people can wear the most colors and they have the biggest palette the same funny enough with trinity london products but it means that you can go a little bit towards some pastels not too much but a little bit and you can go a little bit towards some neons I've rainbow colour coordinated it like that. Yeah. And then just for fun, because I brought them up here, my coats were in another cupboard downstairs, but I just colour coordinated my coats. I just want to show you how important the exterior of an outfit is as well. It's not just about what you wear under your coat, it's about having it everywhere, that colour. The thing is, there's so many colours to choose from, and most people, when they're looking, Lucy, at what colours they suit, it's what, what is that color that you gravitate towards when you're really down? So there's kind of these sort of cornflower blue, which for me is for mid-toned. When you get onto the sort of ice blue, the next one here, that to me is for more cool toned skins. Do you see it's a cooler blue? Then you've got these kind of what I call dirty colors, like a slightly dirty turquoise and a, and a rusty orange. These actually work well on somebody with a little bit of warmth in their skin and maybe a sort of auburny hair. Yeah, so these are sort of um, pinky tones. So in the cooler area would be the fuchsia, all right? And that, that lovely fuchsia bougainvillea. Yeah, so fuchsia is the coolest. Bougainvillea is that sort of mid-tone. Tomato is for warm tones. And then that pink there is the sort of what I call a neutral pink. Whereas this salmony pink is a warm toned pink. Just work out, is the color warmish, cool or mid? Is it dirty or really bright? You've been saying on your uh, lives a lot to people to get up and put on color. Yeah, I have. Could I... you imagine a day wearing black right now? No, I mean, I really, like I have one dress here, a new one from Zara. Let's kill the color, shall we? Don't want to kill the color. Wear the color. How can you tell when something doesn't suit you? Okay. What are you looking for? If I pick up this yellow, it's all right. It makes my eyes bluer, but you know, when you put a buttercup under your chin and it reflects on your face, I feel the color yeah. reflects into my skin without makeup on like death warmed up. This sort of yellow, which is one shade away from that. It's a bit better. Yeah. If I go for the dirtier, slightly dirtier shade, this is for warm tone people. 
the chartreuse. It's quite nice, but it slightly washes me out, but it doesn't fight my complexion. And then the color I love, which is maybe a tiny bit too bright for me, this neon one, but I'm just gonna show you. It's a little bit too strong. So if I had to go my perfect yellow, it might just be that sort of lemony, soft lemony yellow. Yeah, that's pretty. You've got to test things. You've got to think, when I put this color up, do my eyes look brighter? Does my hair look richer? Does my skin look good? And if it's sapping the energy and the life out of your face, it's not the color for you. One concept is you can either decide in your life to wear color with color, like similar colors. I sometimes like to do the entire outfit the same color. This was a magical moment because I found this cost shirt with these Zara trousers that were four years old. I found the cost shirt a year later. And then I found these really sweet, cheap and cheerful earrings, which were from Accessorize, which were an identical color. The one way to wear color is with its best friend, you know, with a similar color. The other way to wear color is to wear colors that fit in the same category, but are opposite ends of the scale. So this is an example of pastel contrast. I think the inspiration for me came here because in the stripe of the Serena Butte trouser, there's olive green and there's this sort of pinky shade. So this would be beautiful as well with a baby pink. Yeah. But the lavender top is baby color enough and has enough of a relationship that I feel this softness. Nothing is jarring. Without the necklace, it could be a little bit green on the bottom, lilac on the top. But just by putting the necklace on, you kind of bring the outfit together. And that's yes. what we'll be talking about today is how can accessories also bring your outfit and make those colors work together. So should we put some stuff on Lucy to give examples? So this Lucy is one of my favorite contrasting looks. It's a true red. A tiny bit blue, but true. And I've got on it this sort of turquoise blouse. There's a few things here that I think are crucial when you do this kind of look. If I tucked both bits in, all right, you see fully this contrast. I want there to be a relationship vertically and horizontally of the blue and the red together. So you're blending that blue down? I'm blending the blue down and then I'm doing a little earring that brings it together. And then I did think I might do a little bit of mama, sheer shimmer, just to bring together the red. Gorgeous, so easy. That's really nice. Do think about your makeup because I love the way I'm picking up the red again in my face. Very good for mid-tones. I've got this bloody delicious combination. Hold on a second. So I take a little bit of Pia because it's in that necklace. Yeah. Mew Mew. And I might just do a little bit more blusher when I wear yellow. Because yellow can be a washing out colour, but it's also a fabulous colour when you get the makeup right. And then on top, I'm putting Sheer Shimmer and Bunny, which if any of you have Pia, it is delicious. Delicious with Sheer Shimmer and Bunny on top. And then I'll put the last bits on there. You know, the life of it is reflected in my makeup. It's so fresh. And I like those two yellows together because they're not, I couldn't do neon with the lemon and I couldn't do neon with the daffodil, but I can do the sort of lemon and the daffodil. This top is a cost top. And then these are very old Philip Lim. Okay, I'm gonna now do a bit of orange. Okay, so this is my orange look, Lucy. Yes. And this orange is not a bad color for me. It's amazing for the warms. So I want to put a bit of a mid section of colors on it to just give me some extra color around my face that is not orange orange. Although I can do orange, but I like the introduction. And then it allows me to play with my makeup. Maiko is just exaggerating the orange. So for the summer, I would do that and I'd put on a sheer shimmer and I'd lift my face. But in the winter, I might go darker. I would be tempted to go a bit plummy and put on Chloe, like that for winter. Would you keep that necklace with it if you were going for a wintry look? I wouldn't, you know. You're right, this is a summery necklace. So then I might take that off and then having that depth of color on my lips might be enough. And then I might smoke up my eye with some Empress. What I might do for winter is put a jacket on. And you know, Lucy, there's a really good thing to know is that if you buy something in a color you love 
take it out with you to find its friend because this jacket is from Zara. Mm -hmm. The trousers are Victoria Beckham. Oh. It, identical color. Because what happens is there'll be colored trend companies and they advise all the people who make the fabrics for the designers and the high street. So you will see a certain color come through in fashion. Taking it with you to shop is such a good tip. The number of times I've gone out and thought, oh yeah, that's the same color as those pink trousers. Yeah. And you get it home and it's completely different. I know, our perception of color and the reality, yeah. somewhat different. I think this color is far more for warm, warm tones. Yeah. And the orange, true orange, is kind of mid and a little bit cool. But if it was a slightly brighter tangerine, that would be cool. I don't hesitate now with color because it's a habit. And I yes. just look for more and more of it and I know the joy it brings me. Yeah. And so once you get over that hurdle, suddenly it's like you don't care your height, your size, your, your proportionality, just, you just think, God, I feel so much better when I wear color. Yes. Fuchsia and yellow, two contrasting shades. I give a little bit of relationship around the skirt of the yellow, and then in my ears, I have a little bit of the color. Well, to me, these colors go so well because they would sit opposite each other on the color wheel. And sometimes those opposites are what you want to be doing. Yeah. But makeup-wise, I do need some fun makeup with it. So I'm going to put a bit of Dahlia which is really the color of the skirt. And then I'm gonna put some bunny on top because I'm obsessed with bunny. But I like the color and I like the color with the yellow and with the earring. And then I like it that you see the color again here repeated. So there's that echo on my lips and then it's repeated. I love your point about the color wheel because yeah. I think if you can think about the color wheel and if you don't know what the color wheel is, go on the internet, look up color wheel, opposite colors. You know, another one, that's a fabulous color clash. Yeah. You know, with those earrings. What wouldn't go with that skirt? This skirt? Yeah. I think going, going to something which isn't a total clash. You know, yeah. something in the pinky family. Because yeah. it's such a cool pink and this is such a warm pink. Uh -huh. That to me does not go. And I probably wouldn't do this, definitely wouldn't do this with green. I don't know why. So. Color with color. Yeah. This is a Victoria Beckham VB top, and this is a skirt from Zara. And then these are cheap and cheerful earrings. Yeah, I don't, it's, fab. it's kind of fab, isn't it? It makes me feel just joyous, and the yellow yeah. makes it feel summery. But I think the lip is too strong, so I'm gonna just change it a bit. So I've just got that hint of the Dahlia coming through, and I've put some Mia on top. But then it sort of works with the earring and with the, um, neckline. If you were wearing that in the winter, what colour socks or tights would you put with that? Um, I would go down to my sock drawer and I would get burgundy and put that on and then have a gold shoe. Coat wise, but I might do that. No, I love that. You know, and then I do like burgundy tights and then just burgundy shoes, just keep that clean and then just have that contrast of those colours together. Okay, I'm going to do one last out before you lose. Okay. Okay, so another contrasting story, Lucy. Oh, I love this. And this is, there's a funny story to this because I had these on a live last week and Joe Elvin, the editor of New Magazine said, where did you get those trousers, Trini? I love them and they're Zara. And I bought them in a medium and an L and the medium was way too small. This is an L. And uh, so I said to her, oh, they're Zara, but they're last year. And then I went to my cupboard and I saw I had another pair. And I sent them to her. Oh, that's so I think nice. she's very happy. So with this, I'd kind of look at this, Lucy, and I'd think, I do need a bright lip or some good jewelry. I could either do an earring to bring the color up again, like that, and keep everything neutral. The brightness of the blue at my ear is my best blue shade, and it just makes everything wearable. My alternative would have been to put on Pookie, so I'm gonna cover the earrings and put on Pookie, which is just about the shade of the trousers. Like that, I think it works well. I think now it's beginning to slightly fight with the earring. It's too many colors around my face. How many colors is too many colors? 
Well, when you begin to think, do you see the eyes first or do you see everything else around it? Or I do something really neutral, like a wash of Emily, which gives colour, but it doesn't totally fight. I love it with the earring, Lucy. Yeah, that blue you know? is stunning. Yeah, and I think those colours together work really well. I'm ready to go and do some damage in this, I'll tell you. <laughs> so why do these colours work together? What's the tone of them? It's interesting. It's not totally obeying rules here because, you know, you'd think to yourself, if I had a top in this shade, that would be the better yellow. Oh, interesting. It's a neon with a neon. But the okay. neon is a tiny bit strong for me because these are so contrasting and this is not totally mustardy yellow, it fobs it. I have those trousers and I have a yellow jumper. Oh my God, you have those trousers, Lucy. You've got to wear it. Yeah, I'm gonna wear it. That's great, that's your inspiration for next week. I mean, we could go on color and color and color. I have so much more on the rail. I love tomato with tomato. Sometimes you can go darker. So I've taken a very dirty greeny turquoise with a darker green trouser. And then I've done my little parrot necklace with it. I feel like you were inspired by your own uh, jewelry closet confessions last week. You know what? I think you are. 100% correct. You are, because when I finished that, I started doing this with those yeah. necklaces. And you know what, Lucy? When you don't know what colors to wear, sometimes you need to look at patterns and scarves. So like here, look at the colors in that. Any yeah. patterns generally are so beautifully thought through that they either do tonally correct or they do, you know, very good contrasting. So look at Joanne Himes. You know, she has a dress here and she's taken literally the color of the shirt I had and the color of those trousers I put on earlier. Yeah. You know, she's very good around print. So if you don't want to wear print, look at some prints and look at the colors they put in together. Ladies, my challenge to you is this week, I'd love you to tag me, Trini Woodall, on your stories and wear some color with color and show it to us so we can put it up on Trini Woodall because I just want you to feel, if you've never done it before, this is the week to challenge yourself. It's not scary, you're not going outside, just do it for you. Lucy, as always, it was a pleasure, darling. Thank you, Trini. Bye. Bye, bye.